Welcome to July Set News, take a top stories in crypto and bring them out in bite-sized pieces. So today, just like the thumbnail suggests, is September a bearish month? And we take a look at uh, the data and analytics. Yes, it is quite a bearish month. But the real question is, is how bearish is it going to be? And we'll take a look at uh, some points and just go from there. And I can tell you right now, not too bad. Also, we'll take a look at some positive news as India and the government comes out and says, this is how we're going to regulate cryptocurrency. This is a fantastic move by the Indian government. Also, we'll take a look at Dan Teaches Crypto and Trade the Chain as we were on the one of the NASCAR cars for this uh, week's race or this, this weekend's race. And finally, we'll take a look at JP Morgan and the analysts' concerns about what is going to cryptocurrency, which will tie this all together. So uh, that is what is going on. But the big question is what's going on in the market? So today it is very early, 7.20 in the morning, September 5th on a Sunday, and we're almost at $2.3 trillion. And the Bitcoin price has uh, climbed again up above 50,000 and is staying there. So we'll see how long that lasts. But the thing I want you to notice here is the daily sentiment, which is right by the Bitcoin price in the upper left-hand corner here. The daily sentiment is 34 out of 100, which is quite low considering where we were at just a couple of days ago. We we're in the 70s and daily sentiment is 52 out of 100. But just for Bitcoin, people are quite bearish. And this is, and as you know, we're using Trade the Chain. There's a link in the description, looks something like this. And what it does is it just goes through all the different blog posts, all the websites, there's a lot of scraping, Reddit, uh, all the different uh, social media. Also on Twitter, it has one of, uh, one of the very few direct API integrations. So it uh, assimilates and digests millions and millions of tweets per hour to give us a sentiment. And this is what people are saying, like, look, uh, we don't really trust what's going on with Bitcoin. Of course, you're always going to have the people who are who are ever bulls. They don't really care what goes on. But in an average, people are pretty bearish. And that is the news for what it is. But the real question is, is why are they bearish? And how long is this going to last? And what's going to happen in September? So really, if we take a look at it and we just take a little quick jump back, you have to understand something is that there's going to be bullish months and bearish months. Sometimes there's more buyers and sellers. That's just how it is. The real question is how bad is it going to be? But I, have, I want you to remember one thing, and that is, that, that is this, that for all the times that you have been an investor in crypto and digital assets, you have to take a look at this is pretty much what it's like. And all those different FUD articles that you go through, all the different, you know, China's banning cryptocurrency and the hash rate is super far down. And there was a, there was a hack at this exchange. And then uh, Scott Menard from Guggenheim comes out and some gold bug says something like this. And then, you know, you have something like September is going to be an awful bearish month. When people look at you and you've been investing for a long time, people are like, oh, it looks so easy. But it's not because we're bombarded with these, these articles that really put in doubt. And what you really need to do is take a look at the story behind the story and see exactly what's going on. And that's why I'm here. And that's why it's so difficult to get to this area, but it can be done. It's just, we have to do our own research and our due diligence to make sure we're on the right track. So what I'm talking about here is this little article which talks about September Bitcoin bear phase and what's going on. So let me blow this up so you can see it. Now this one, of course it was, uh, it says very simply September, hasn't been the most favorable month for Bitcoin. Historically, the month of September usually sees Bitcoin in a bearish stage. And that's true. So uh, when we just take a look at the, the monthly candles, uh, going back into the most bullish of, of years, which is in 2017, take a look at September of 2017. And it was red. It was a red bearish month. Awful. Then in 2018, if you take a look at September, again, a red bearish month. Then in 2019, uh, we've got uh, another red bearish month. And then in 2020, uh, we also have a nice red bearish month. So September historically has been pretty bearish all the way along. But I want you to notice one thing, and that is that this, uh, especially in the, in the most bullish of years in 2017, look at this. You had a pretty uh, small little red candle, but it was bearish. Well, look what happened afterwards. Massive bullishness massive bull, nice big fat green candle when Bitcoin went all the way up to like 20,000 or 19,000. And then in crypto winter, wasn't that favorable because it was a pretty bad year uh, for what was going on. And we had, uh, it was bearish, bearish, bearish. And then it was a little bit of turnaround, which was pretty amazing since, you know, 18 was an awful year. I, I lived through that, it sucked. And then we take a look over here, September, 2019, we had an 
October, nice green, a little bit of red, a little dancing around, and then it went to green. And then in 20, we take a look at this. Yes, there was a very bearish red candle for the month, but then look at this. Green, 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 and pretty massiveness. So if we take a look at it historically, yeah, September's a, not a great month, but afterwards, fireworks. Okay, so then moving down, it says, um, Bitcoin stock to flow model creator plan B takes it like this. He says, look, September might be a, what he calls a bearish wave. However, October is poised to take the market upwards. And December, as asserted by plan B, could see Bitcoin finally hit $100,000. Let me say that again. Bitcoin could finally hit $100,000. That's been my price prediction since January 7th, 2021. I thought Bitcoin would go between 100, around 130, maybe even 150. So I'll take 100,000. Maybe I overshot it. I'm okay with that. And this is the big thing. Where's it going to go down low? Because just a couple months ago in May, we were flirting with 29,000, 28,000 Bitcoin, which means all the altcoins uh, went down massively. Well, uh, we're at 50. So he says uh, September 43,000 floor could be the worst case scenario. So would that be so awful, $43,000? For me, no, because I dollar cost average. I think in that situation, this is a godsend and uh, I can start to buy up really cheap alts uh, as, it, as it falls down because I know, well, I believe, I don't know anything. I don't know, I don't have a crystal ball and this is all investment opinion on investment advice. But I believe that October, November, December will be pretty great months. So I will be buying like a madman, and that'll be like one of my one of my big buying sprees that I could probably get into. And then he states uh, October sixty three thousand is the worst case of the floor, and that's what Plan B from the stock to flow ratio talks about. And he says this uh, also Segwit adoption causes Bitcoin fees to drop significantly. Uh, and he states, uh, because a large exchange, I will not say who, finally implemented SegWit transactions. SegWit adoption is now 80% uh, uh, of what's going on and expect fees to stay very low. So with SegWit adoption, apparently, uh, the actual transaction cost for Bitcoin is very low. And that's what we want. We want cheap, fast, and reliable, just like everything else. So if Bitcoin can do that, so much the better. So again, if we're taking a look at what's going on as far as the market, uh, September might not be so great, but I mean, so far it's, it's been pretty good in September, which is kind of, kind of scary. So maybe this will buck that trend and we won't see, uh, a, a big bearish month, but so far, if this is the most bearish it can get, I'll take this all day long. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. We're talking about India and crypto because I thought this was great news for cryptocurrency in general. We had covered this months ago when India was going back and forth and and uh, you know there was different uh, conflicting uh, news reports, but this is great news. So this was right out of uh, India, right out of uh, some of the uh, uh, publications and the Economic Times reported Friday that cryptocurrencies, uh, as far as like India and the government, will be treated as an asset slash commodity, not as a security, as an asset or commodity, for all purposes, including taxation and as per use case, payments, investment, or utility. So it just depends on what it is, but it's gonna be a commodity. In addition, the government will decide which cryptos will be allowed to trade in India. Now that's where it gets interesting. Will they allow all cryptos? Sounds like not. Maybe they won't allow the five, 10,000 different cryptos that are out there, but just say, hey, we're gonna let you do these, this, this, and this. And it, it's all gonna be hashed out, but that would be interesting to see which ones will be the winners, which ones will be the losers. But in the gen general grand scheme of things, hey, uh, it looks like we're moving forward. Uh, Nichelle Shetty, CEO of crypto exchange Waz WazirX said this, this step is very positive for the crypto industry, and I'm glad that the government is taking this direction towards crypto regulation. This will bring more clarity. Let me say that again. This will bring more clarity for the entire industry and push more entrepreneurs into this sector. It will reduce the fear of VC investors wanting to invest in the crypto in India. For retail and traders, this will again boost confidence and bring in a sense of stability. And this is exactly what we want. We want I mean, I know some people will scream at this, scream at me right now and say, but this is what we want. We want some clarity. And some people say, well, you don't want regulation or clarity. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Because if we can get that, then we can have a lot of other players that are on the sidelines that can't get in because of wh whoever they are. Maybe they're the big institutions, the big money players. They're like, you know what? I, we don't like this because if we put a bunch of money in, the government comes in and says, no, it's a security. Well, now that just screws up all our plans. And we're not here to take a bunch of risks. We're here to make a bunch of money. 
So if we can just get a little clarity, that's good. On top of the fact as this, this is why I'm excited about, they said it's a commodity because uh, not too long ago, August 4th, 2021, uh, Brian Continuous, Contin I think I said his name right. Yeah, probably sure I nailed it. Uh, who is uh, the chairman of the CFTC. He says this, just so we are clear, uh, the SEC has no authority over pure commodities or the trading venue, whether those commodities are wheat, gold, oil, or crypto assets. And there's a little bit of a struggle, I think, between uh, Brian here, Contends, and uh, Gary Ginsler from the SEC. And I think they're kind of battling out to see which one it actually is. I believe they're all commodities. I don't believe there's, there's there actually are some securities in crypto. You have to admit it, there is. But it's not the whole darn uh, market itself. So if Brian from the USA come on and go, look, they're commodities. And then India can come on and say, look, it's a commodity. That's how we're going to do it. Why can't we just uh, go forward with that? Let's just get moving. Let's get some clarity and move on. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I think this is great news. I know people like clarity. I like clarity. I like a little regulation. I mean, little regulations like cake goes a long way. A slice is good. A whole cake will ruin your night. And that's what's going on. So on top of that, just a little quick good news for us. Uh, this was uh, from uh, our guys over at uh, Scent Token, Trade the Chain. I want to give a shout out to Alex Mascioli and the team. They were prominently placed on two NASCAR uh, cars for this weekend's race. A lot of uh, exposure along with Voyager and probably some others. Who knows who else, who else is getting into all the different other sports. But then right there, very small is good enough. Uh, Dan teaches crypto.com. And uh, if all these things that I'm talking about sounds like a new language to you, just go here to Dan teaches crypto. It's a 100% free website. I get all the basics and a little bit more intermediate stuff in there. And it's 100% free. Like I said, you can just go in there, learn what you want to learn, and then come out here and you'll probably be a better investor for it. So uh, hopefully we got a little NASCAR fans come in and then hopefully you will sign up and go from there. And that was it. So I just want to give us thanks to that. And then finally, let's finish up with JP Morgan and their goofy concerns. So what's going on? JP Morgan, again, concerned, which is kind of funny because JP Morgan, uh, as you may know, let's take a look at the timeline of JP Morgan, shall we? Ah, yes, the timeline from Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan. This was in uh, 2015, Jamie Dimon, virtual currency will be stopped. And then of course in 2017, JP Morgan CEO, Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud. And then uh, moving forward into a little bit later, 2018, Jamie Dimon says he regrets calling Bitcoin a fraud and believes in the technology behind it. And then yeah, here we go to 2020, Jamie Dimon says, Bitcoin is not my cup of tea, even as JP Morgan has warmed to crypto. And then uh, 2021 in February, JP Morgan says investors could make Bitcoin 1% of portfolios. And then April 26, 2021, JP Morgan may offer actively managed Bitcoin fund report. And they did. So uh, that essentially is a timeline of JP Morgan. And now they're weighing in with their expert opinions. Look, if you've been in crypto for as long as I have in 2017, you front run all these guys, you front run all the smart money, all the banks, all the people who are geniuses out there and are like, uh, we, you gotta listen to us. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, they're just taking, they're just making educated guesses. So just take this with a grain of salt, but there's a question that I'll poise to you in a little bit. So this little article, I thought it was good to bring up just for one thing, altcoins now control 59% of total market cap from just 22% at the beginning of August. That's amazing to go from 22% market cap and dominance to 59%. And that's why it's so important that Bitcoin uh, stays up a little bit. So, uh, I mean, if it, even if it does go down, altcoins will go down even more. And JP Morgan analyst said this, the share of altcoins look rather elevated by historical standards. In our opinion, investment opinion, it is more likely to be a reflection of froth and retail investor mania rather than a reflection of a structural uptrend. So here's the real question that I have as far as like mania and things like that. Who says it's a mania right now? I think it's a, it's, it's a mania when you don't have any use cases, you're not really doing too much with it. And people are just speculating, massive speculation. But as things are actually being used and there's real world utility for cryptocurrency, it's not just a mania. It's people going, you know what, we're probably going to need that in the future. And that's, I'm going to invest into it now. It's a difference between when JP Morgan says it's a mania and retail is investing and retail is investing as opposed to if they are investing into it and just going, you know what? It's a great future use. We're speculating on this, but you guys are just mania. 
we're the smart people. Make sure that you listen to us and go from there. So to me, I think there's actual real world utility come in. Just ask uh, the El Salvadorians. Just ask everybody who has uh, gotten NFTs. Just ask me, who has taken out a loan against his cryptocurrency to purchase an investment property in Puerto Rico. So, uh, and then name your pick of whatever utility. And there's massive more coming from there. So that's just the question I want to pose everybody to see what they said and tell me what you think about that. But uh, that is it. So I know it was a quick one. Uh, a lot of things going on. Tonight I'll be over at uh, George at Cryptos R Us and uh, James and Invest Answers for the DCA show, which I'll be on time this time because uh, last time I got a little bit too uh, caught up in some other things, uh, charity event. But that's it. So look, if you like that video, you found some uh, value in it, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Also consider subscribing. I'll need to talk about our time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.